Hi, my name is Pete Spector. I work for the Caltrans Headquarters Division of Construction. Welcome to the Caltrans and Industry Joint Training on the use of the ProVal Smoothness Assurance Module to develop grind plans. This training was developed pursuant to an approved Rock Products Committee scoping document that identified the need for common training for both Caltrans and contractor employees. This is one of several efforts being employed to improve the understanding of the International Roughness Index, also known as IRI, the specifications, and to promote smoother, longer-lasting pavements for our customers, the taxpayers. So this video and the other 11 videos will go along with our guide that we've developed. The guide is shown here on this slide. It's titled, The Guide to Using the ProVal Smooth Assurance Module. So there's a graphic of a typical grinder, and then a graphic showing a grinder in all the dimensions and that'll be covered in this manual. So there'll be one video for each section in this manual. So there's 12 sections in the manual. Right now we're on video number one which covers section one, the overview. Section two will cover grind simulations. So it's an this section basically describes the mathematical model that ProVal uses when it develops the forecasted surface elevations of the pavement after a grinder makes a pass over it. So that's a function of the, those elevations are a function of the actual profile itself and the dimensions of the grinder that you input into the software. Section three in the manual covers the online training, which is what you're listening to right now. So it gives, if you have the manual only, you'll see the link to the website where you access this training. Section four covers the software versions. So as of December 2017, there's versions 3.5 and 3.6. And there's differences between how these two versions work when it comes to developing a grind plan. So version 3.5, the older version, will develop a grind plan for a, a single wheel path. And you have to analyze the wheel path separately. If you're using version 3.6, you can't analyze the wheel pass separately. It analyzes them both at the same time and gives you a grind list for both wheel paths and it assumes that you're going to be grinding the full lane width which is the specification rule for grinding concrete lanes. For asphalt we can grind one wheel path at a time. So if you're developing a grind plan for asphalt, hot mix asphalt or an existing asphalt concrete surface, you know for Caltrans employees we recommend using version 3.5. For concrete we recommend using version 3.6. We won't make an official recommendation for contractors employees, but if you if you read this section or look at this video number four, you'll understand the differences between the two different versions of the software and you can make form your own opinion on which version you want to use. Section five and video five will cover using templates. So when you're developing a grind plan, there's a lot of settings that you have to enter in and save. And if you disclose the software without without saving it, those temp all those settings you'll have to enter in every time you open up the software. So it's important to save all these settings, especially when you're developing grind plans, because you'll find yourself going in and out of the software quite a bit. Section six is titled using the export section function. So there's a function in ProVal where you can define sections of a profile. For example, if I had a profile that was 30 miles long, that's a file that contains the elevations of the left and the right wheel path. Every inch for 30 miles, that's a big file. In order to process process that file, it will it can take quite a while, so often you might find it, it'll depend on your computer, you might want to export out smaller sections and work on smaller sections at a time. So this section will show you how to do that. Then also, this gives you the basic steps you need to define a section. So sections, you can define a section as a leave-out or as a generic section. So when you define a section as a leave-out, it just doesn't do the analysis for the roughness over that section. You can define a section as generic and it will just highlight a section that you're interested in. Section 7 is titled an overview of ProVal's auto grind function. So when you develop a grind plan using the ProVal Smooth Assurance Module, the first step is to use the auto grind function. And it's basically a button or in version 3.5 and version 3.6 that it occurs automatically. It's an initial list of grind locations the software believes you're going to want to use. And it, in most cases, you have to 
refine that list because the the list is going to give you more locations than what you need. So it's essential to, when you're to be successful when you're developing a grind plan. Understand what Proval auto grind function is doing when it gives you that initial list. Section eight is titled "Refining Auto Grind Lists," and this section is broken up into two parts. The first part is 23 minutes. That sounds like a lot, but it it'll it provides the information necessary to do a estimate for pre-paving grinding. So when you're in the project development stage and you want to come up with an estimate of the amount of pre-paving grinding, it's not necessary to do a full-fledged grind plan because the conditions are going to change once we get to the field and we'll have to come up with new profiles anyway. So you'll just go through the initial steps of doing a grind plan for localized roughness. You don't have to make the final plan. Okay, so that's what part one will cover. Part two will cover how to make refinements to those plans. So if you're developing a grind plan and you're in construction and you want to develop a grind plan for localized roughness, a single wheel path at a time, you'll use part two. So, so section nine is titled Saving and Naming Grind Strategies. So you'll, you'll perf do a lot of work developing these grind plans and if you don't save them, all that works lost. So this section provides information necessary to save and name your grind strategies. Section 10 is titled the grind plan development methods using the smoothness assurance module. So section 10 breaks up these methods into three different methods. Method 1 is what we cover in parts 1 and 2 of section 8. So just how to develop a grind plan for localized roughness only, a single wheel path. Method 2 provides a method to develop a grind plan when you have to address mean roughness index issues also so often when you take care of your localized roughness it'll reduce your it will always reduce your mean roughness but maybe at times it won't reduce your mean roughness enough so you have to implement more grinds than are necessary to just reduce localized roughness so this kind of gives you a method of some of the accounting you have to kind of keep track of your left and right, right wheel track at the same time and when you're working on one wheel path, you kind of need to know what's going on in the other wheel path. So there's some, you can paste some numbers on the spreadsheets to keep track of that. Sec method three in section 10 is when you have a mean roughness index issues that are quite excessive, there's, you know, it's a heavier l layer of accounting that you have to do when you're developing the grind plans for both wheel paths. So it's, it's very, it's pretty complicated on how to do that but this will provide you the steps to do that and it's in the manual we don't really go into it into the video too much because that would take way too long so um, I'm gonna mention this now uh, you can have a high amount of mean roughness and localized roughness and when you address the localized roughness you still have a considerable amount of mean roughness well that method 3 will cover that and it's often the case I found where somebody will make the assumption that they they're gonna have to blanket grind the whole project and I've had a lot of people tell me that and I've gone in and de developed a grind plan where there was a lot of grinding required but we we're on the, it was on the level of 10 to 15 percent of the surface area not the whole project so you know there's a lot you can develop a grind plan for mean roughness index and localized roughness when you have a fairly rough plan and save yourself a lot of grinding if you plan it ahead of time so we don't really want people grinding the whole project when it's not necessary, so nobody wants that. Section 11 is titled Simulated Grinds and Executing Grinds. So this basically describes the difference between the simulated grind in ProVal and executing a grind. And there's some key issues you need to understand. So when you're developing a grind plan, you don't, you know, you need to take some extra steps sometimes to make sure that when they take that plan to the field it actually has a chance of being executed the way you modeled it right so now we're the simulated grind is basically it's simulated if you followed that perfectly in the field it you know it should be close but there are some slight differences so you know you'll want to make sure you're accounting for that when you're developing a grind plan Section 12 is titled Developing an Engineer's Estimate of Cost and Time. So if you're a project engineer during the project development stage and you have to come up with your estimate for pre-paving grinding, you know, you can follow 
section 8 part 1 and take those quantities and then use the steps in part 12 here to go ahead and develop the, your engineer's estimate for paving grinding. So that's the end of this video and we'll move on to video number 2. Thanks.